Good morning, museum friends and families. It's Miss Teal from the San Diego Children's Discovery Museum here in Escondido, California, with another Growing in the Garden activity for you. You know, these guys are a little hard to love, I have to admit. Do you know who they are? They are spiders. Their fancy scientific name is arachnid, and we'll find out why they are different than insects in just a few minutes. They have eight legs, and they have two body segments. They have big jaws, and they have superpowers in their behind that allow them to spin webs. Sometimes they have a bad fight, but usually they are one of our apex superheroes of the garden. Without spiders, we would have way, way too many of these. Way too many insects that can cause disease, make you sick, or eat up all your food for you. There wouldn't be enough food for human beings if we didn't have spiders to help control the population of the other inhabitants of the garden. Let's go and take a closer look at these wonderful creatures now. Spiders have two different body sections. The yellow and black section is where her tummy is. The black section with the eyes and where the legs attach is called the cephalothorax. The two parts that look like little legs at the top are called pediopulp. That's how she feels things. And the two projections that look like horns from the top of her head are actually her jaws. How many legs does a spider have? Can we count them? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight legs. Insects have six legs, but arachnids, that's the family that spiders belong to, always have eight legs. Where does the spider silk come from? It comes from two glands in the back of those legs, just two of those legs in the very back of the spider. So it comes out of those legs. And then these two funny looking horn-like things on the back of my orb weaver spider twist that silk around and around, making a fiber that is so strong, it's stronger than steel cables. And that scientists and engineers are working on ways of making artificial spider silk because it is so light and strong. Let's go see how she uses it in her web next. Here is probably one of the most common types of garden spider webs that you will find around your garden and home. It's called a tangle web. Can you tell me why? Well, it looks like it's all tangled up, doesn't it? It doesn't really look very much like the beautiful orb weaver's web. So the tangle web is very messy and it allows for flying insects to get caught very easily to become the spider's dinner. All of these webs are developed by the spiders over many, many, many 
thousands of years. And you can pretty well tell which type of spider belongs to what type of web. And then in the case of our tarantula friend, of course, she lives underground. When you see a tangle web, I want you to be extra careful because that is also the home of this spider. Do you know what type of spider that is? It is called a black widow. We have them here in Southern California and throughout the United States. You can tell that Mother Nature is warning you to stay away because of the red hourglass. These spiders have a really bad bite that will make you sick. If you see a tangle web, it is probably the home to a garden spider, but still I want you to be extra careful around it because that's also the same kind of web our black widow friend makes. Another type of spider web that you will see in your garden, in the grasses in the morning, or in the flowers very low, is a funnel spider web. What shape is this? Is that a triangle? If you see a triangular web, you know you've found a funnel spider web. How she catches her dinner is that she waits for an insect to jump into her web. Then she's going to shake the web, causing the insect to get stuck. That's how she catches her dinner. If you find a web in between the branches of trees that looks like a soft cloudy hammock has been built, well that is the sheet web types of spiders. She casts little threads from above that catch and knock down insects that are flying by. Not all spiders live in webs. This one is called a tarantula. Do you see all that fuzz on their legs? They live in very hot environments. So that fuzz helps insulate them from the desert heat. The other thing that is an adaptation of tarantulas is that they don't live in webs. Webs are a lot hotter than where the tarantula chooses to live. The tarantula digs burrows. I'm going to bury my tarantula. Oh, now I'm much cooler from the heat. And a wandering insect comes by and jump. That's how the tarantula catches her dinner. Spiders can keep us healthy. They certainly help keep us fed by controlling other insects that we don't need to have in the garden. By learning how to identify the types of webs they make, we know which ones that we need to encourage and which ones we need to stay away from in the garden. Go outside and see how many different types of spider webs you can find with a grown-up. You can also practice drawing webs with crayon or using glue and salt to make wonderful webs on dark colored construction paper. Have fun learning about our spiders. After building her shield web 
in our garden at the San Diego Children's Discovery Museum, this lovely little garden spider is going to wait quietly until her lunch flies along and gets caught in there. Well, isn't it interesting to think that the more that we learn about something, the less spooky and scary they are. Make sure and find spiders around your home. Don't touch them, but ask a grown-up to help you take a photograph of one. Then post it to our Facebook page. For more online activities, go to www.sdcdm.org.